We have an update on Ryan O'Reilly's injury status, and it's not that great. We'll detail it today on Locked on Leafs. Your Locked on Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into your March 7th edition of the Live Dullies Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host Dave Morsuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked on Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free. Wherever you get your podcast from, you can also check us out on YouTube as well. It's Locked on Leafs on YouTube. we got new content each and every weekday for you, Monday through Friday. Hit the little notification bell as well so that you can be alerted every time we put out a brand new video for you guys. It's all Leafs. It's all the time. Um, not uh, not the, the happiest news around Leaf land today. We got some updates on Ryan O'Reilly, also John Tavares. There's an update there as well after taking a beating in that game against the, the Vancouver Canucks. He did not practice today. We'll tell you about that. In just a moment, but uh, Ryan O'Reilly, uh, that news is definitely more top of mind. We saw him leave the game against Vancouver, took a shot to the hand, did not return, and was seen in a splint afterwards leaving the building. We got word from Sheldon Keefe today, Ryan O'Reilly heading to LTIR and will miss the next few weeks. Not great news for the Maple Leafs or Ryan O'Reilly. Yeah, at this rate, I was just hoping that maybe whatever it was kind of went away. But as soon as you saw him in the splint, kind of you kind of knew it was leading towards that path of you knew this was going to be something that was going to keep him out out of the lineup for sure. Yeah, like this Ryan O'Reilly isn't a seventh grader who sprained his finger and the school nurse put a splint on it just to make him happy. Like if if he's wearing a splint, it's for a reason. It's not for a little boo boo. Uh, on the finger. So yeah, it, it definitely wasn't a great uh, sign to see that. And then today we obviously got the news that it's a little bit more serious. It is a broken finger. Um, he is back in Toronto and he's getting a, a MRI on the finger to determine the severity of the break to see if potentially whether or not um, surgery is needed. So I guess there will be another update in the coming days of how uh, serious this finger is. That said, uh, Sheldon Keefe did say that they plan on getting him back before the end of the season, and for sure he should be ready to go by playoffs. And uh, did note and say that's what we brought him in here for. At the end of the day, it's a team that's going to the playoffs. Pretty much know who they're playing as well. You know, he was brought in for to to start game one, so he's not overly, um, you know thrown off by the injury it's it's unfortunate and you would rather O'Reilly be in your lineup um but it's not the end of the day and I don't think it's really gonna cost the Leafs a whole lot in the standings it's just very unfortunate yeah I was listening to uh the um Nick Alberga Jay Rosehill kind of breaking down the injury and Rosehill kind of said the whole thing you hope for and he said is well it was most likely a broken finger he said the thing you hope for is you don't have to like throw put pins in there or anything like that. Like that's mm. kind of the worst case result because that requires more of a a lengthier timeline to get finished. But yeah, just hoping that best case scenario, the amount of time he'll be on LTIR, which will be the 10 games in 24 days, like 24 days is the minimum. You just hope that's that's kind of the timeline, but this could be a like a four week thing. That's kind of where I'm, I I would think it would be, but again, we won't know until they get a better look at that finger. Exactly. And uh, so the LTR rules for those who aren't, uh, aren't aware or, or just need a refresher. Um, so as you noted, when you get placed on LTIR, the, you are mandatory that you miss 10 games and 24 days. So pretty much a minimum of 24 days or 10 games um, as well. So 
it, it, if you go and you do the math and you look at the schedule, the earliest he can return will be April 1st against the Ottawa Senators. So that's the earliest that we will see Ryan O'Reilly back if everything goes uh, as planned and, and he returns after the 24-day mark. That would be uh, when we see Ryan O'Reilly back in the fold, uh, not before that. So he definitely is out for the remainder of March and could return for the April 1st game against Ottawa, again, depending on the severity of, um, of, of that injury. Now, that said, Dave, uh, Ryan O'Reilly, is there any concerns, I guess, about when you look at this lineup and you look, there was only 19 days remaining. You look at how much turnover there's been already in this team. The fact that he will not be here for a 10 game plus potential stretch down the, down the, down the, uh, the final stretch here. Could that impact things in terms of trying to build chemistry with his new teammates? Well, it depends on what role you are trying to use him for, right? Is he going to be in the, you know, third line center role? Because that that will need a little more time for him to get accustomed, uh, accustomed to whoever he's playing with. Or do they decide to keep him on that second line with Tavares and Marner potentially? And we already know the chemistry is there. It didn't take much time for them to kind of get things going. He's also a veteran. He's played with many different players throughout his career. I'm not too worried about him gaining that chemistry with other guys. Um, and the good thing is, is he'll be able to still practice and things like the, he'll be able to skate. He'll be able to be on the ice and do yeah. those things. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. If this was like a, a younger player that didn't have a lot of experience in the NHL or things or like a defenseman who, you know, needs to build that chemistry with his defensive partner, I would probably be a little more concerned, but with, with Ryan O'Reilly, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about, whether or not this is going to throw him out of sync at all. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point. Like, he, he's a veteran. He, he knows how to play the game of hockey. You could drop him into any lineup, and he'll figure it out pretty quickly. Um, the, only, the only thing, it's not necessarily O'Reilly. I think it's more so just the fact that that doesn't allow Sheldon Keefe to really experiment a whole lot with O'Reilly in the lineup. And, you know, sometimes you, you may have to – the first time you get a look at something might end up being in the playoffs if he is out for an extended period of time and you don't get a chance to do that experimentation of, of a certain line, whether it's with or without O'Reilly, just depending on, you know, it's, it's just different ones there as opposed to not being there. Um, that, I think, is the only thing. Not that it's a worry. It's just like a, it's an unfortunate set of circumstances. It's nobody's fault, as we all know. Um, but that, that would be the only thing. As for O'Reilly, you know, he'll come back and – should be good to go for sure, assuming that uh, all things heal well with that with that broken finger. I'll say this, though, because I saw a lot of people um, kind of saying, oh, no, here it is. Nick Foligno 2.0 again. I, now, I will admit that I remember there. I did have a take earlier in the trade season, earlier when Ryan O'Reilly's name first surfaced. I said, mm, not sure how much I love it because he had that broken foot. There was that injury. And it just had a little bit of that Nick Foligno stench to it, right? Trading for an injured player, a veteran, a guy who's played a lot and is into his 30s already. You know, is that is it going to end up turning out the same way? And then, of course, he gets here and, and you know, two weeks in, breaks his hand. Um, so there were a lot of worries about that. I did see that starting to infiltrate the Twitter sphere. I'll say this, though. Um and I think I brought this up before where, where it is different Felino and Ryan O'Reilly is Felino's injury was a muscle injury and those flare up and those linger, right? That was a back situation. Mm -hmm. And that was what happened with him. It was an injury that flared up and lingered and he just couldn't get back to hundred percent a bone injury, which is what is believed to be, which was his broken foot earlier in the year and what is believed to be with this finger is a bone injury. You know, those things can heal and then they're fine. Like that's not something that'll flare up and, and re-aggravate. Right. So there, there is a slight difference here with a broken bone and a muscle injury, which we saw with Felino. So this is a better case scenario, I guess you could say. And 
maybe that's a glass half half full approach to uh you know this Ryan O'Reilly injury is is I don't see it turning into Felino because it's not something that should persist throughout the rest of the season like it did with Felino when it flared up again at the end of the year and then definitely into the playoffs where he was just so stiff the guy could barely play. Don't envision that being a situation with uh, a broken finger. He should be fine um, going forward. As for John Tavares, there was a weird situation today in practice. He was not skating in the top six, but he was at practice in an extras gray. We'll explain what that whole situation was all about on the other side. But first, let me tell you about one of today's show sponsors, and it's one of our favorites. It's FanDuel. It's the midway point of the NHL season here, and now's the perfect time to download FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book, and because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use, and you can bet on everything from money line to point scores, goal scores, shots, Whichever props you want, they got it on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your chance at a bigger payout with same-game parlays. So don't miss out on your chance to get the no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. We can go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On These Podcasts. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We got a game tonight. Leafs and Devils will be uh, finishing up that road trip. It's been a long one for the Maple Leafs, but, you know, kind of coming to a close here against the New Jersey Devils. No Luke Shen. Also, as he missed practice, he was, uh, he stayed behind in Vancouver, his wife giving birth to a child. So, Makes sense that he stands, uh, he stays back. We'll tell you exactly what the lines are going forward because they are very different from what we saw happen in Vancouver. A, because we already talked about Ryan O'Reilly and his absence for the next little bit, but John Tavares not expected to play tomorrow either. Weird situation when he was skated out into practice and he was in an extras gray sweater, which typically is where the scratches where because they're not part of the top six not part of the bottom six they're an extra body the 13th forward if you will which was very weird to see um and then after practice obviously sheldon keith was asked about that and pretty much what he said was uh you know john didn't feel right after the game against vancouver where he took an absolute beating we had talked about that previously a couple of massive hits and it sounds like they're just taking all precautions at this point in the year. If he doesn't feel 100% and just doesn't feel right, then, you know, they're just not going to force it. So uh, Tavares, weirdly, though, able to practice, but not going to play in the game. Like, this this is a weird situation. Yeah, the fact that we don't know exactly what, this, what the issue is, like, he said he's not feeling himself, which... Like that's kind of a weird thing to put. And like those are the types of things that get me a little worried. Like, is this because of the hit? He did say he used a lot of hits. There was travel. So I'm wondering. I don't like to use the C word. I don't like to use concussion. I, I know. I know. I know. But it's that kind of sounds like it, it could, could be. be. I mean, it could also just be he's got bumps and bru like if, if Sheldon Keith had just said, you know, he's got a few bumps and bruises and we're just going to give him a day off just to kind of let a things heal. That would have like that would have been better than ah, eh, he's not really feeling himself. Yeah. Like even say like yeah, like he if even if he would say something like uh you know, yeah, he's got something. He 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 just wants a game to rest up, or he's got something he's dealing with. But just to say he doesn't feel himself does not really uh, rest well with me. Like I, I never want to speculate on anything, but I think you can kind of sit there and and you know glean from that what you will. And and we didn't talk about what it meant, but both of us, the first that was the first thing that popped into your mind. First, then also popped into my mind is. Hey, uh, what if it's this after that game against Vancouver? Um, hopefully not. Again, probably will know more information later in the week, but uh, won't play in this game against the New Jersey Devils, which is, um, you know, not ideal. You're, you're, you're now going up against a, a quality team, a top-tier team, 
without Ryan O'Reilly and John Tavares, two of your top centermen in your lineup. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's that's definitely not ideal. You and you know, we know Austin Matthews probably st- it was feeling the effects after that game in Vancouver. We don't know how his uh knee is kind of holding up. So like they the Leafs are a bit banged up here. They're on the road. The only benefit here is that there's going to be certain guys that are going to be put in positions that they may have never been in before and you know, anything can happen. Knock on wood, nothing does happen in these t- the lines that were at practice show up again, but Maybe this is a good opportunity to see what what happens if you go through you know sort of these in you know pile up injury pile ups and you have to be a little bit creative with how you deploy your lines. Yeah, I mean you got to experiment now, right? Without John Tavares, without Ryan O'Reilly, he experiments. And I did I did find it funny how I saw a lot of like Leafs Twitter kind of freaking out about the the O'Reilly injury, where it's like, oh my god, what are the Leafs going to do? We'll just revert back to two and a half weeks ago when he wasn't on the team. I mean, there's, there's already the, you know what a, a possible lineup could look like without a Ryan O'Reilly. You don't have to dig too far into your Leafs archives to find it. Um, but Ryan O'Reilly and John Tavares out that you don't see quite often. Um, so that's why things get a little bit interesting. Why don't we take one more quick break? Let's get back and look into what the forward lines uh, and the defensive pairings look like going into uh well at practice and then which it would be the projected lineup we'll see heading into the game against the devils and see where things stack up because like we said earlier with these injuries there's a lot of shuffling going around and uh let's 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 chat about it so we'll do that on the other side but first dave i'm gonna wear from our show yep, sponsor. it is a product that i use every day athletic greens with one scoop of ag1 in a cup of water, I'm absorbing 75 high-quality minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start my day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, focus, aging, all of those things that I listed. The reason why I started taking Athletic Greens is I wanted something that was simple to take, help me in you know, different facets of my life, I didn't want to be taking all these different pills and supplements at different points in the day or remember to take this one before I have some, my breakfast or have this one later in the day. I wanted something that was simple and easy for me, and that's exactly what Athletic Greens does. And tons of people take all kinds of multivitamin, and it's important to choose one with high-quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every day to take care of yourself, and your subscription comes with a year supply of vitamin D, which is so important to add in these winter months when we don't get as much sunlight. And if you want a little more convincing why you should look at Athletic Greens, it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews recommended by professional athletes, trusted by leading health experts as well. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. Mike DeStefano and Dave Morissuti with you. We had a game tonight, as mentioned previously, in New Jersey to try and wrap up this uh, long road trip that the Maple Leafs have been on. It's been a bit of an up and down road trip, I would say. Um, but they'll finish things up against a pretty quality opponent, but uh, they'll be without two main soldiers. John Tavares expected to miss the game, and then uh, Ryan O'Reilly out for a while here with a broken finger. He will also not be playing in this game and many more after this. Um, Let's take a look at what the lineups were in practice today because they were really, really juggled today and you know, we saw some interesting things, and this is how things are going to shake out in the game. So we've got uh, Kerfoot remaining with Matthews and Marner. That I 
somewhat expected to see, I suppose, especially after the game Saturday. Keith literally said, yeah, Kerfoot's flat out playing better than bunting. So didn't really surprise me, I guess, to see that. Where it got a little interesting was on the second line. Sam Lafferty takes John Tavares's role as the second line center with Yarncroft and Will Nylander on each wing. What did you think about that one, Dave? Yeah, I mean, it was certainly a surprise because usually you would expect like Kerfoot to move to center in those situations. I thought that would have been the natural fit there because we've seen him play that role before. Um, we know that Pontus Olberg has tried playing the 2C before. It didn't really go well no. when they did that, so I can understand why he wasn't put up there. David Camp isn't a top six center, so I can get that as well. So it was definitely interesting that it was Lafferty that's given that opportunity, and I'm I'm just really in- intrigued by it because you got two guys in Lafferty and Nylander that can skate pretty well. I don't know yeah. how they're going to fit together that's going to be a very interesting fit um but i am surprised that kerfoot wasn't the one given that uh that center job yeah i'll I'll say that like as much as i wasn't surprised to see kerfoot move off that top line um i guess you could say it is surprising only because you figured he would have been inserted into that 2c hole as per usual maybe bunting would go back to playing with uh, matthews and marner that said Get a look at Lafferty. See if he can do it. Let's just see if what he's got, right? He's a new player, and he's kind of a the shiny new toy for Sheldon Keefe. So I think it makes sense to, to see what he's got. If it doesn't go well, all right, I guess you can go ahead and you could juggle some things up, and maybe then you put Kerfoot. If nothing's going well through the first 40 minutes and you're down 3 nothing, all right, put Kerfoot at the second-line center, move Bunting back up, and do whatever you need to do. Maybe you can even put Nylander in the middle if you really want to. Get him those touches. Um, but what I am kind of intrigued by this pairing, you remember last year when Nylander played third on the third line with Camp and Pierre Engvall, and it was the pace that Nylander and, and Engvall played with that actually kind of woke Nylander up last season towards the end of the year when he was really struggling alongside Tavares. Hasn't necessarily been the case this year, but maybe playing with that pace with a guy like Lafferty could almost bring you know, a similar type of production. Like, I think we could still see those two have some success here. So um, that is is something that I'll be intrigued to watch in this game. And that's a tough team. Like, it's a really good team out in, in New Jersey. Like, they roll three lines. They roll all four lines, but they have a deep top nine, too. So, you know, they're going to be going up against some pretty quality opponents as well. Um, on the third line, Zach Aston, Reese, Camp, and Achari. So... What's interesting about these lines is like, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Basically, I think he did not want to touch the, what he believes to be his fourth line come playoffs. So he's going to play them as the third line, but that's the trio who he wants as his fourth line. And without Ryan O'Reilly, they essentially just move them up a slot and then put Holmberg as the four C with Steve's and bunting on the other side. And we can imagine that it'll probably be bunting and then O'Reilly's in there to take one of those roles and, you know, Tavares, obviously, Lafferty will take one of those spots, too. But that's kind of how I looked at seeing Camp, Charlie, and Zach Gaston reese as the third line, just because you want to see those guys continue to build chemistry and because um, you assume that'll be your fourth line come game one of the playoffs. So move them up and keep them together as opposed to breaking things up um, and pushing guys like Steves and Holmberg up your lineup. Yeah, I think that's a that was the big reason, like, Steve's and Omber, it's all about matchups, right? You you're on the road, you don't get the ability to match lines like you would want to. So I mean they're gonna try their best to give that fourth line true fourth line minutes because they just haven't really played a lot. I mean, Holmberg and Steve's haven't played in the NHL in a little bit, right? So to ask them to come up and play three C with, with three the third line role would be a little bit much to uh I think it at that rate. Like Achari Camp and uh Aston Reeds, that's going to be a good defensive line, you know, fourth yeah. second line. So I do like that that line. I do like that combination. But yeah, I think you just go three guys who are similar to each other and have played with each other, and you just move them up, and you're going to expect to see them probably a little bit more than usual. Yeah, and and I remember I think looking at this line and and thinking to myself like, um, or looking at this grouping, I guess when everyone was healthy. And saying, hey, the Leafs kind of have uh, two first lines and two third lines. 
Well, now we're going to see if Camp Fast and Reese and Achari can disguise as a third line because it's exactly what they're going to be against a pretty good New Jersey Devils team. So I guess it's a good chance to see exactly how they stack up when they're being given uh, a little bit more um, responsibilities being up or up the lineup a little bit compared to maybe where they should be come uh, drop of the puck at game one. All right, let's look at the blue line where we also saw some changes. So Jake McCabe and TJ Brody remain together. Those two so far have yet to be on the ice for a goal against at five on five. So they are becoming that shutdown duo that Sheldon Keefe envisioned. So he remains uh, with those guys as his top pairing. Mark Giordano reunited with Justin Hall. So Justin Hall remains in the lineup. Timothy Lilligren checks back into the lineup, and he is with Morgan Riley. So I, at least Riley and Hall are not together. And honestly, if you look at the numbers, Riley and Lilligren, they've played almost as many minutes as Riley and Hall together. But Riley and Lilligren have been second among all defensive pairings with 150-plus minutes together in terms of goals against per 60. So those guys have been incredibly efficient and they've played some really good defense. They've gotten good goaltending. The save percentage is also kind of really high. So they've gotten a little lucky because of good goaltending when they're out there together. But still, when you're not seeing pucks go in the back of your net, regardless if it's because of good goaltending or it's because you're playing well yourself, it's good for your psyche. And for a guy like Morgan Riley, who uh, looked at the numbers today, Dave, 18 goals allowed on the ice in his last 14 games. That is not bueno my friend uh so hopefully sees less minutes less matchups and less pucks in the back of the net with he and he and timothy lilligren together taking on lesser competition yeah it, it's uh it's really unfortunate because they they need morgan riley to not be bad like, like yeah, it's, yeah. It's- no they they don't need him to not be bad they need him to be good that's the that's the scary part yeah. dave they won't be they won't be fine in the playoffs if Morgan Riley just like isn't bad. He needs to be good for them to really make noise and make a run here in the postseason. And they need to somehow snap him out of this funk that he's in. Pray to God that it's all mental and he can find his confidence and turn back into you know that top defenseman that he's been. Uh, over the course of, of his career. I understand that he has not been a defensive juggernaut throughout the duration of his career. He's always been more of an offensive guy, but you just look at the amount of goals he's been on the ice for this season, as opposed to most years, it's, it's really taken a, you know, a, a, a just steep downturn falling off a cliff defensively, um, which I think it's a little too quick for that to happen. So hopefully he can bounce back a little bit here and give you some competent defending and then also you know be good offensively and just be a flat out good player for this team because they need it yeah i think for morgan rally they got to find a way to tell him the less time you can spend in your own zone the better it'll be for you so it's got to be that's just got to be the message there you know you get the opportunity to get the puck out you got to do it like that fourth goal was because he turned the puck over and behind his net and couldn't get it back and they couldn't get it out those and are look, situations it's not going to work out well for Morgan Riley. Yeah, and look, dude, I, 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 I will bet you five bucks, Morgan Riley, in less than an icing, okay, in less of an icing or a, a yeah. So I'll, we'll say unless it's an icing call, will not take a single five on five face off in the defensive end. There's no reason for it. You've got McKay, Brody, Geo Hall. Those guys go over the boards in every single defensive uh, defensive zone faceoff, and Riley Lilligren can go over for all your offensive zone and you know neutral zone faceoffs as well. But defensive zone, there's no reason to put Riley and Lilligren out there unless maybe maybe it's going up against like New Jersey's fourth line if they're given an offensive faceoff. Yeah, no, I, there's yeah, like that's. But again, it's they're on the road, so actually they don't even have last change. So they're gonna if they throw out Riley Lilligren, there is a good chance that uh, yeah. we'll see Lindy Ruff throw out you know one of these top guys, whether it's the Heisher line or the Jack Hughes line. Yeah, but at least you can try to get them not in the like in the defensive zone. You can you can make sure that you get your guys in there. That's the 
I know you don't get the the chance of, to see what matchup it is, but you got to take what you can get in these situations. Well, that's what I'm saying. Just like never send them out there. Like regardless, yeah. like just don't do it. Like if Morgan Rally gets up and there's a defensive zone face off, the coach better say, "Yeah, sit your butt back down." Don't. Oh, you know. yeah. So that I'm staring at you, Dean Chinoth. Do not put Morgan Rally out there in defensive zone face offs tomorrow, please, for the love of God. At least limit it. If he th- if he takes more than two. If he takes more than two defensive zone faceoffs in this game, I'll be upset. I will be upset. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see if he took more than two. And that will be uh, there'll be a conversation to be had if that ends up being the case. Uh I don't believe there was a starter name today. Did you see if there's a starter? No. Um who do you think? Samsonov, you go back to Murray. Like who who do you think should start in this game? Oh, you know what? Like the the question here is, do you feel like you want to give Murray another game just to get a rhythm, a little bit of a rhythm or because they don't play. This is another weird thing. They play on, on the Tuesday night and then they don't play again until Saturday. So there's a, there's a, a decent amount of time there in between games. That'd be a lot. That'd be a lot of time for Samson off to be off too, but the guys also played a lot. So having a few days off, I think shouldn't be a bad thing for, for Samson off. So I would probably lean towards Murray just because he didn't play terribly against Vancouver. So let him get another game. I'm curious your thoughts on this. Cause I have, uh, I have like a game plan that I've set up in my head for the goalie situation down the stretch. We know how poorly Samsonov's numbers have been on the road, literally allowing a full goal against more on the road. Um, and not a great win percentage on the road. Meanwhile, one of the best home goalies in the entire National Hockey League. If you're Sheldon Keefe, would you rather start him on in road games or home games with those splits? Oh, I think the data will show that, yeah, there is something there to be to be worried of. Like, yeah, I, I, I find it surprising just because of the home road thing. I don't know what it is exactly. Was say, I, I've never really seen that before well, too often. He said, like, it's it's a mentality thing. Like, it it, it some does affect him, apparently. So then guess what? <laughs> Matt Murray, you're going to get the start on the road. Like, if you're if you're coaching, you hear well, your goal. So this is why, like, I don't think so. My, my thought process is I'd want to get Samsonov as many road starts from here until the end of the year and get him comfortable – because come the playoff time, buds, you're going on the road. You got to win those games. No, that's true. That's true. Um, it wouldn't be, it, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Keith just decides. Look, Samsonov's already been off for a while. He's. We don't have a lot of. You know, there's going to be this time off. We got to get him on a, in a game. This would make the. This would make sense. And it's against a good team too. So see how he can, how he can play against a good team, right? Yeah, well, he hasn't played since what? Uh, when's the Cal- Thursday? Yeah, Thursday the Calgary game? Uh, Wool got the Calgary game, so it would have been since uh, March 1st. Right, so yeah, so he played the Wednesday against Edmonton. So he's been out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It'll be six days of rest in between starts. I mean, I, I think you could throw him in there, get him another road start, and then give Murray a nice soft cupcake game. Um not cupcake, but it'll be a home start at the very least. Somewhere where he's played well, and Murray, you kind of gotta, you gotta get his confidence up and get him rolling. So, you know, last time he went to make a start on home ice, we know what happened. So, I kind of would like to see what happens next time he has a chance to start on home ice. Hopefully, it doesn't, uh, you know, we don't get a flare up at some point there. So I, I feel like I go Samsonov actually on Tuesday and then I'm blanking. Who do they play Saturday? Um, I'm blanking and I obviously I can't look it up on my computer because then my entire thing will freeze on me. It is uh, Edmonton at home on Saturday. And then they play Monday against the Sabres at home. Yeah, so it's n- not a cupcake game, no matter who you're playing, obviously, with with it being Edmonton, but it's a home start, and, and maybe you go, you roll with Murray, because, uh, well, Samsonov got lit up last time <laughs> they played Edmonton anyway, so maybe you go with Murray on, on Saturday and Samsonov in the game against the Devils. Sure. Maybe. 
I don't know. We'll see. I don't think there's a wrong answer. That's just my thought process and what, probably what I would be doing if I had the the uh, the lineup card. But I'm not Sheldon Keefe, and I don't have the lineup card. So we'll see what he decides to do uh, ahead of this game. But should be a fun one. Should definitely be a, a, a good game here, Toronto. Trying to get back to their winning ways. they got to figure out a way to get uh, to get rolling here and go on a good run. It's it's the final stretch. No more win-lose, win-lose. you got to get on a run and get hot and you know prove that – Cal Dubas made the right choice going out and making all these different moves. They got to start winning some games. Uh, as Matthew said, it's a two way street. All right. Go out there and show them that you're happy by playing exceptionally well, like you haven't so far <laughs> since these moves were made. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, let's, let's do it against the Devils tonight, uh, a playoff team, which typically they wake up for those games. So, we'll see what happens. All right, buddy. Let's wrap it up tonight. Good stuff. Uh, game tonight, 7 p.m. in New Jersey. I believe, uh, I know it's on TSN actually tonight. I don't know where, if it's on 1050 or on the fan, but uh, you can watch it locally on uh, TSN 4. All right, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to Locked On These Podcasts on all podcasts and platforms, including up on YouTube. We got daily Leaves content coming out to you. You can follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. Actually, yes, tomorrow will be my last show for the last while. And then I'm going on vacation. So I will recap this one for you. And then you got it the rest of the week. We'll, we got some guests, hopefully, that could come and help you out and mm-hmm. uh, keep you company so that you're not here by yourself for the next week and a half. But I will be back with you tomorrow. We'll recap the game against the Devils. Until then, keep it locked right here on Lockdown Leafs.